Hello, everyone. Um, we are the Trenchcoat Loraxes, and we're going to be presenting about quantum walks. My name is Owen Matheson. I'm Ben Dodge. And I'm Foster Smith. And this is our team photo right here. OK, so quantum walks are the quantum version of random walks. So random walks um, are when a walker is going to take random steps around a graph. So it's going to jump in a random direction from node to node like this every single uh, iteration. Quantum walks are the quantum version of those random walks. So on a random walk, you're using normal bits. Those are a zero or a one. In quantum, those bits are going to be zero and one and everything in between. Uh, so that's going to look a little more like this. So in a quantum walk, instead of just walking in a random direction, we're walking in every direction. We're taking every path possible at once. Um, but in order to extract any meaningful data out of that, we have to measure it. And measuring it chooses one path to show us. So the way that we get around this, we're gonna measure it a bunch of times in order to um, get a sense of where the walker is traveling on the graph. Our project was an implementation of quantum walks. In our implementation, we used a circle graph in which the walker can only either go left or right. It has a 50% probability of doing either. We also implemented a graph of a torus. As you can see, it's connected in a lattice-like pattern where each edge will connect to the other edge. For example, the 7-7 node would connect to the 0-7 node, and the 0-7 node, if going down, would connect to the 0-0 node. Now, we didn't actually run this on an actual quantum computer because it would have taken a prohibitive amount of gates to run and we wouldn't have gotten any good data. This is reflected in our simulator results in which we used two state bits and six iterations. The only two possible numbers were zero and two. Running it on an actual quantum computer, we got these results, which are pretty similar to our original. We also tried using four state bits for 16 nodes. However, even with only one step, we weren't able to get good data because quantum computers currently have high error rates with decoherence and certain gate errors. So they're very limited in what you can do with them currently. All right, now let's talk about what we learned from this. First, as you can imagine, building this system came with quite a few challenges. First, this, this is a pretty theoretical concept. So most of the resources available were by theoretical physicists or theoretical physicists. There were very few existing resources on implementing this algorithm, which meant we had to do most of the work and the learning. Speaking of implementation, to build this, we, need to, we needed to write programs in two different languages with two distinct and very often contradictory paradigms. Now you may say, okay, quantum walks, they're cool but they're just walking around a graph, right? There's not much applicability to that. Well, that's the amazing thing. Quantum walks can simulate a variety of real world systems in a much, much faster than any classical random walk, allowing us to gain new insights into our world. First, quantum walks can simulate neurons and how they interact inside our brains. They could simulate proteins folding inside our bodies. They could even simulate population exchanges and evolution in ecosystems. If you remember your, from your biology class, we can simulate Darwin's finches using quantum blocks. Finally, quantum blocks can also simulate or potentially simulate movements on the stock market, netting someone who figures out this algorithm quite a bit of cash. Next, there are a couple of future directions we'd like to pursue if we had more time to work on this algorithm. The first is encoding. Essentially, we'd like to create more complicated graphs and more uh, unique ways to move around them. This will allow us to simulate more complex tasks. Next, we'd like to expand our systems. Currently, we were only able to run them on very limited systems with few qubits. With more qubits, we can uh, simulate more interrelated uh, tasks. Finally, speed up. By applying certain algorithms and manipulations on qubits, we can make our quantum walk far faster than any classical walk, allowing us to simulate large systems that classical systems currently can't. Finally, thank you. Thank you to all of Beaverworks 
staff, instructors, and TAs for giving us the knowledge we needed to build this amazing algorithm. And finally, thank you to the audience. We hope you enjoy this algorithm as, as much as we did. And we hope this inspires you to view quantum computing as an exciting field. Thank you. Here are our citations.